Nothing changes if nothing changes. Unless, of course, you add an S onto an already existing product SKU. And that's exactly what Intel have done with the 9900KS. It's essentially a 9900K, however, it's a guaranteed clock out of the box to 5 gigahertz. And it costs from what I gather a little bit more than the 9900K, coming in at 513 USD MSRP, and in Australia it's up for pre-order for 899 Aussie dollars. So at this price point, is this 8-core even worth your consideration? Let's roll the numbers first, and this time we're actually going to be doing overclock numbers because my 9900K does go to 5 GHz, we're going to be comparing it against this 9900KS and see how high that can go and then come back with a generalized conclusion on the gaming and productivity numbers and see how it also stacks up against the AMD competitor Ryzen Zen 2. So what we can see with those gaming numbers was that the 9900KS I had here overclocked to 5.2 gigahertz all core. And it did so whilst using more power. And that's just basically a silicon lottery thing. The five gigahertz guarantee is pretty much going to match that of my 9900K, which already overclocks to five gigahertz. And now here's the funny thing. I've had two friends on the Gold Coast where I live They've recently bought 9900KFs respectively, and they've got their CPUs up to 5.1 and 5.2 gigahertz, all core stable. And so this 5.2 gigahertz, it seems to be something of just a normal thing where you're now getting a 9900K that's binned and it's gonna give you better performance than a 9900K that goes to five gigahertz. And we saw with these games, the 200 megahertz does give you a little bit more FPS but it's nothing to go crazy about if you got a 9900K, for example, and it only went to five gigahertz, or even then you got a 9900KS and that only topped out at five gigahertz to what it was guaranteed out of the box. But I will say before we move into those productivity numbers that I did test out these games here today at 1080p with a 2080 Ti. So it's not going to be realistic for practically most gamers out there, except the most competitive gamers who really care about getting the at most FPS possible. And even then, a 9900K at five gigahertz or even it's 4.7 gigahertz all core at its default speeds is going to do you very well. I think at that stage, it comes down to a lot more skill and also your internet connection than getting these extra frames that this CPU can provide. So that being said, out of the box, the 9900KS is technically the king of gaming as it stands, though it does come in with a cost of 513 USD, as we said in the intro. And here's where we move into the productivity numbers where the counterparts, the Ryzen CPUs, start to provide a lot more value for money, but also start to provide the winning numbers. And so moving through things like Adobe Premiere Pro, for example, you can render out a video faster on this $500 3900X than you could on a 9900KS. Moving over to things like Corona and V-Ray, two rendering benchmarks, we can see that the 3900X at the same price point really starts to hand it to the eight core counterpart. And then of course, we've got the 3700X, which is coming in a lot cheaper than the eight core 16 thread from Intel. And as we move through more of these numbers like Geekbench, 7-Zip, and also Cinebench, 
we can see that the numbers and especially the value for money starts to favor the Zen 2 Ryzen counterparts and it does so whilst using less power. So what we saw with those numbers after analyzing the gaming and also the productivity numbers is I feel that the 9900KS is pretty much not going to be for a lot of people out there. It's going to be a niche CPU. And here's the funny thing, when I checked the Silicon Lottery website, they were charging around $900, I think, for a 5.1 gigahertz guarantee. So I guess Intel's made their own division of the Silicon Lottery and they're charging less for it. And so that's what you're getting basically with a 9900KS is a bin sample that'll go to five gigahertz all core. So it is the cream of the crop of those CPUs in that you're guaranteed to get that five gigahertz all core and at the same time, you'll probably likely get an extra 100 or 200 megahertz all core out of the KS. So basically that's the niche for this CPU. It's for someone who wants to go and get a binned chip, but doesn't want to go through Silicon Lottery where they charge a lot more than the MSRP. But there is another market, I guess, as well. And that's for someone who doesn't want to overclock at all and wants probably the best gaming performance out of the box that's who the ks is going to suit but even then i was a little bit concerned because you're most likely and if you want to get the best gaming performance out of the box you're going to have to go into the bios and enable your xmp profiles anyway and the funny thing is about that is overclocking the 9900k and also the kf is really simple all you have to do is generally change your all core multiplier and also your voltage and up that just a little bit so pretty much two settings and then you should have higher overclocks on your cpu which will pretty much match that as we saw here today of the 9900 ks but now it's time to address the elephant in the room and that is intel i'm going to be talking directly to you guys you need to bring out what enthusiasts want. And AMD's already done that with Zen 2. They gave us IPC improvements, they gave us better clocks, they gave us lower power consumption and a node shrink, which they go hand in hand. But every enthusiast is waiting for you to do the same thing. You really need to get off 14 nanometer and start giving us IPC gains and also hopefully higher overclocks too because giving us an extra 200 megahertz after how many months is leaving me sitting here scratching my head because enthusiasts do want more. And I think, especially given the track record, when you had the Sandy Bridge days, everyone knows you're capable of doing it. The 9900KS here today, it's left me feeling a little bit meh. Like this product, yeah, it does have a purpose, but it's a very niche purpose. For most people out there, they're just gonna look at the 9900KS and go, well, I can get a 9900KF for cheaper, or if I want productivity and gaming and I wanna get the most bang for buck, I'll go for Zen 2. And so that pretty much sums up what you've got with this CPU. Silicon Lottery, now from Intel directly, where they're giving you the 9900KS. Though that being said, it does deliver the numbers, at least with the sample that I got here, which did go to 5.2 gigahertz in 25C ambient environments. And that about does it for today's review. If you guys enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button. But we've also got the question of the day, which comes from Amar, and he asks, is this still available in the US? And he's referring to the Audi gaming monitor that we did a video on, and that essentially, I don't know where that's available. That thing's a bit of an enigma from what I'm hearing where it's available in some stores in Audi Australia, but I don't know where it's available in terms of the rest of the world. I'm hoping Audi would kind of give some update maybe on their website with some of their computer parts because it did offer really good value for money. And also to further complicate things, people in the US say that Audi just sells groceries over there they don't sell anything else so don't know you'd have to check locally where you live and hopefully that answers that question but also let us know in the comment section below what you think of the 9900ks i mean my thoughts are like we need more as enthusiasts we've been waiting long enough that's just my opinion and i'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon and also if you've made it this far 
sub button and ring the bell if you're not subbed already. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.